Pencil Power. Why, hello there, art venturers. In this Sketch Practice Diaries, we're going to be studying the work of Phil Borasa. Borasa. Um, definitely been familiar with his work in television shows and such, but never actually knew who the artist was. And um, I have a, my first uh, art mentorship student has expressed interest in learning to draw in this style. So I'm going to be studying it, breaking it down into its key components so that we can better work on developing those skills. And if you're interested in a art mentorship program with me, I'll leave a link in the description. I'm offering a discounted uh, price for the first three signups. So there's two spots left. And um, yeah, it'll be pretty much like the idea is to customize it to make it enjoyable for you in the exact style that you want to work on. So I think this could be a good reference photo to start with. One of the great things about drawing superheroes is that they wear skin tight outfits, most of them. So you can really get to work on your anatomy. Um, so the one of the first things is I'll just start to lay down, lay down a structure. And what I'm noticing is that there is this kind of idealized musculature for his figures. The um, upper thighs, the thighs or the upper legs seem to be especially, especially long. And there's a lot of like straight, straight angles, not as many curved angles in his work as, as there are you know, straight defined lines, which is really great because there's a lot less ambiguity when you're using straight lines than when you're using curves. Because you can really see what the angle is and how long the things go for. So I'm getting a little too much into details right now. So let me just actually lay this out more roughly before going in and studying, you know, the details of what he's doing. And it looks like I got the legs a little too long where we got here. So let's let's make these adjustments as we go and just kind of start to get an idea of what his ideal proportions are, how he likes to work. One of the other things I'm already noticing is the uh, shoulders. There's a very, very strong and defined shoulders in most of his characters. And you can also see that the biceps here are very defined and it gets quite thin before going into the forearms. So there's a little bit of an exaggeration there, which is really cool. And this will give us the basic, the basic structure we're looking at. And I don't like to worry too much about proportions to start with because I think that comes naturally if you, you know, kind of keep working at it and keep it in mind. So right now I'm going to focus more on um, like the shapes and uh, just other defining features that that make this piece what it is. So but I am going to to keep a general eye on proportions because I don't want things to be way off. So I'm going to make some adjustments here and then we will leave it at that. Cool. And as with all sketch practice diaries, I strongly encourage you to sketch along and explore this piece with me yourself. All right, great. That should work for now. I still can see that the legs are actually too short now. So actually, you know what, let's, let's go ahead and turn this like that and give him a little more room. Okay, I think that looks good. Good rule of thumb is that the top of the head to the bottom of the crotch is about halfway. So that's approximately fine right now. Okay, cool. So I think one of the biggest things about his work is that the line work is pretty thin and um, doesn't vary too much. So there isn't like uh, a much variation in thickness of like thick to thin, like some lines are thinner, some lines are thicker. And you see this more often with animated, um, like in animated characters, 
with uh, TV animation because keeping the line work consistent as far as thickness makes the whole thing a lot more consistent. Well, if you vary the thicknesses, it's one more thing that you've got to keep in mind and make sure that everyone is on board with, you know, frame by frame. While if there's like a uniform line thickness that you use, I think that would simplify the process. So that's my guess or understanding why, one of the reasons why that um, his work has that line quality. Another thing is that there's a good like representation of the rib cage. So you can see here this zigzag line and this line, I should have probably done this on a new layer, but it's okay. Um, def really define where the, the rib cage is. Actually here you can see there's another small line there. And then from that, we've got these really big kind of exaggerated pectorals or not pectorals, sorry, um, what is it called? Abs, uh, abdominis, whatever. And there's a clear kind of zigzag pattern with the shadows underneath to really define that. So this is really kind of like that superhero, you know, perfect, perfect kind of uh, musculature, idealized musculature. And this also carries over to, so we've got the rib cage, something like that. And I've made him a little, a little thinner than he's looking here, but that's okay. So another big thing about this kind of, this style art is that the shadows have very sharp edges. It's this cell shading, as they call it, where there's, there isn't really any, um, I think this is also from an animation term, but there isn't like a like soft edge on any of the shadows or the highlights. You can see that there's a clear kind of shape and it's either shadow or not shadow, highlight or not highlight. There's no kind of in-between gradient that happens at any point. So I think that's going to be another defining feature of the style and there's a great way to do that using digital, digital painting. Cool, I don't really want to over, you know, overdo a single study. I wanna look at a few different, different images to, uh, to get a generalized idea because you might do something different in one image or I might notice something different in another. So I'm not gonna work on this too much more. I'm just kinda of gonna, and go through like the legs should have been a little bit wider stance here. It's okay. And then um, very thin ankles it looks like. And this one's got some cool, some cool shoes. Aquaman's got some cool shoes over here. Let's just. Kind of indicate this belt. And it's interesting because, so another thing that I'm noticing is that the, the quadriceps, there's something interesting going on here with the quadriceps. I haven't quite nailed it. So maybe on the next, next one, but there's a particular, particular shape and style that I think is distinctive. And the feet are pretty, pretty simple. Just one tone and a good, good simple shape. Okay, cool. I think that this is going to be fine for now. I'm not gonna study the faces too much just yet because I don't wanna get into that kind of detail. And this one actually is, is zoomed out too much. I think the, the faces will be, will be a secondary study because you know I like to, to keep things more more compartmentalized. So if I'm working on figuring out, you know, how he does a superhero bodies and anatomies, that's what I'll focus on. And then on another time, I'll focus on how he does the features of the face, for instance. Um, 
it helps me make sure that I'm that I'm you know really learning the thing that I want to learn before moving on to something else because I find that if there's too many points of focus then there is usually a lot less progress and often just you know, focusing on one point actually helps the other one. So, you know, drawing the bodies will give me an idea of how, how I would want, how he does faces as well, based on things like the line work, etc. Okay. So this is fine for a study. Let me look at it, actually the hands real quick, because that's going to be a, you know, I'm not seeing too anything like super different in the way he does hands from this shot. There's a little bit of like, he definitely has his own style, but maybe a little more angular, but nothing too, too extreme. Oops. Okay, cool. So let's leave it at that and look at another reference. I really like, there was a great Superman one. Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, this will work. There was another one that I liked a little more, but this is a more neutral pose. So let's go ahead and make a new layer and kind of see what's happening here that, that we can learn from. So I do think there's kind of like a boxy shape with the heads and then these pretty thick necks and big trapeziuses. And then there's definitely like this, you know, that kind of whole thing with the pecs, with the, um, what's it called? Abdomen. And there is that like, like I said, this kind of sharp, sharp angles. Like you can see he does the legs the same way here. So that's like a kind of repeating, repeatable pattern that you can memorize and use for a lot of poses. So that's something that can be helpful. Um, they definitely like to, to understand what's going on in the form underneath. When you're first starting out, sometimes just memorizing the shapes and then figuring it out later as you're drawing it or further down the line in your studies can be a great way to just start, you know, producing art and drawing characters that you're, you're excited and happy about. This one definitely has, he's got something going on with the hands. It's hard really to, to identify exactly what it is, but it's like almost like slightly sharper or more exaggerated angles. Same here with the forearms. Okay, triceps, okay. So that should be fine for like a basic, basic outline. So um, this time I'll go on a new layer and I'll actually lower the opacity and try using like a more, um, like an inking type brush. What would be a good inking brush? Inking, let's say try the technical pen. Even though the inking would, should come later you know, I should put a little more detail down here before I would, would ink it if this was like a final piece. But I want to start to get a little more deliberate about what the angles and, and shapes he's using is. So I'm going to, you know, force myself to use a less sketchy brush because that will kind of force me to be a little more deliberate about the lines I'm putting down and I'm kind of including the shading with with the line work. And I've got to admit that um, inking is not my strength, something I haven't put too much time into developing. So it's not necessarily where I'm going to shine, but you know, as all things it's just a matter of practice, so if I start to do more art like this, I'll have to work on the inking and eventually it will be fine. But also inking can be a very like, like methodical and kind of um, tedious thing where you kind of like, okay, you zoom in and, you know, just do a clean line like that. And then if you don't get it right, undo, do it again, undo like that, undo. 
Nope. And then, you know, a lot of times when I see people inking, it's like that, and then it's like, okay, cool. And you erase out the parts, the extra bits, and then boom, I've got a clean line. So, so that's a basic technique, but right now, I'm not working on making a finished piece. So this is like, see, this is interesting on this guy. So on Aquaman, we had more of a, the definite defined, uh, what's it called? The rib cage was defined something like this. So, but with Superman, he's kind of just given it a very clean sweeping, sweeping shape like that. And I think that actually kind of fits with Superman's character. It's hard to, 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 it's like a kind of clean and bold while Aquaman, it's a little bit more like, there's almost like that aquatic anatomy with like a little more detail or something. I mean, that's how I would interpret it. But, you know, it's interesting how these, these subtle details can, um, can like, cause they have basically the same body type, like just a very muscular, you know, superhero body type, right? So within that, how do you give enough difference to let them each be their unique characters? And I think it's just those subtle kind of details that do that. So when I'm looking here, I'm really checking out like, what are the angles for each of these parts? And you can see there's lots of, lots of straight lines, lots of angles to, to, to check out. So this does make, make life a little easier because you don't have to interpret what the angle would be on like a rounded form. One thing too is the neck is about as thick as the head not a little thicker. So that's going to give you that strong superhero vibe. Okay. And this isn't looking perfect, but good for a study. I'm happy with kind of what I'm learning from this. And I think after that, I'll do like my own kind of quick sketch in his style. And of course, I'll, I'll study this a little some more, more on my own. But keep this video um, not too long. I will go ahead and uh, kind of do that, do that in my style. One thing I'm noticing is a lot of his, his superheroes kind of have this upward look. So I didn't capture that here. So if I go to the layer underneath and then I'm able to, to identify where, where the different features would be. So they're a lot higher up on the head, something like that. I can go back here now. Again, I'm looking at such a small reference of this and I'm drawing really small. So this is not the ideal but just to start to get an idea of what's going on there. I'll just leave it at that. Cool. And then this hair obviously should be a lot more towards the center. All right, neat. Let's just look at the legs again briefly like that. So there's that whole thing. I mean, I really like how he keeps, keeps lines pretty much straight. There are very few curved, there are curved ones like right there. That's a curved line, but for the most part, and then there's some great shadow work with the, with the shadows just being, you know, these cell shaded, um, dark, dark chunks. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and do our own little, you know, superhero rendition. Do our own little quick thing of what we've learned. So I'll go back to my uh, kind of sketching, sketching brush and I'll, I'll pull up a new reference, but I'm not going to look at it too much. I'll make this smaller 
And let's find another reference that if I need to refer back to it to, to check what I'm doing, I can do that. Where is, uh, I think there was a flash up here. Sure, let's go with the flash. Okay. So the main thing is, so we're focusing on a male body type for now. Is we've got kind of a basic superhero pose. I'm just gonna keep this pose more neutral. Maybe I'll put one hand on the hips since we're doing like, the, we got Flash over there doing that. You know, uh, stance a little bit wide. That's gonna feel a little more, more powerful and heroic. Okay, and that's gonna give me the basic, basic outline form. I'm gonna want the neck to be quite thick and we'll have the head looking up a bit like that maybe and one of the things is the shoulders are quite large and defined usually and so is the pec pectoralis and then the other one is the rib cage the rib cage will be pretty strongly defined as I mean all the muscles will be and the um, abs, which for some reason I'm having trouble remembering the name of, which is weird today, will be pretty, you know, well-defined as well. They'll be able to see, you can see there's, he doesn't have the full six pack. They've got four, four of them going on there. And you can see the ribs here are done more like Aquaman versus a Superman one. So that's a little interesting note. And then I know that we've got the thighs so he tends to do the legs longer, so I probably want to long, lengthen the legs a little bit more than my my typical legs, and I think that does give a give a sense of like a heroic stature, you know, like very tall and athletic. So I've kind of memorized this this shape that he uses here a lot. I'll just thicken it up though a little more, where there's like the point of the, uh, what's it called? Quadriceps is kind of high and it has like a pretty sharp angle. Something like this. And then I can start also getting creative. Uh, what, what do I want this? Pretty thin ankles. This one, not as much so on, uh, on the flash over here. But I think in general, you know, the ankles are, are getting pretty thin. And then there's a like, they kind of like catch the foot. Like they've got, you know, you can almost think of it like that shape and then the foot comes out. Cool. And you can see a bit of the gluteus there. Let me change this to a different eraser, prefer that. Get rid of the gluteus. And that's looking all right. And then the next step also would be the, the coloring, which actually this is a great style to start off with because the um, Actual digital painting process of this would be very straightforward. You would just do the flat colors of each area. Look how much he's, he's able to exaggerate the, the pec, pectorals here. I mean, they're really sticking out there on the flash, but it looks totally natural. So that's a really impressive, you know, I really like how, how he's able to push those shapes and still keep things looking natural. So I'm just kind of roughly Shading it in the way that that the shell, cell shading would be. You know, this whole side would, would be cell shaded. And then our superhero should have some kind of emblem in the center. So I'll put a diamond there. For now as a placeholder. Sharp shoulders, you know, big traps. 
I really want these shoulders. The shoulder and chest area I feel like is one of the most iconic for um, for Phil Bosa, Bosa? For Phil's work. <laughs> I think that's one of the main places that I'm going to continue to to kind of study to understand you know what shapes he uses. But it's not too crazy like there's you see these big biceps and then see how thin it gets right here before the um, before the forearms in this area right here it gets quite thin and that helps to define define the form. So again here on this side we've got it kind of goes like this gets quite thin and then you've got the forearm going into a pretty thin, um, what's it called, wrist as well. And should the arm be further out? It feels like this should be a little further out. Yeah, I think long limbs in general is kind of like a trademark of this style. Not like excessively long, but like airing on the longer side. Again, I think that um, accentuates these heroic proportions. And see, this isn't a round shape. It's got an angle there. So wherever, I think pretty much wherever you can make something have an angle to do that instead of to go for the round. Right, cool. And then finally, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, so if we were doing a superhero, we could add stuff like this to start getting, what would be this guy's, I'm trying to think of, like he could be, uh, you know, I'm thinking his power is that he's like as tough as diamonds, right? His like skin, his flesh is is a diamond-like material as far as hardness and strength. So, uh, like maybe diamond jaw or something. So let's give him a strong jawline that's sharp enough to cut diamonds. Okay. And then he's like smiling. And I feel like he would have like a superhero, Superman-esque, you know, uh, snazzy hairstyle. So maybe instead of the curl being down, it's just going to be on top. No, you know, this isn't, this isn't like a character designing what's it called, uh, video, so I'm not gonna over overthink it, I'm just gonna kinda have fun and uh, see what kind of character we come up with. And then there's usually like one line here that defines the nose, oh yeah, and then this, this kind of a shape is gonna, with like a couple dots for the nostrils, like that's the basic, the basic vibe there. Which honestly, that looks pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, let's give him let's give him a cleft chin. Why not? Yeah, that chin might be a little too extreme. It's a little 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 too extreme. So that's where it's like it doesn't look like he's looking up. It looks like he has an abnormally large chin. So let's shorten that up a bit. All right, this is not exactly right on the face, but again, I don't want to overdo the face because it's not actually what I was studying. So I'm not going to, to fret about it too much. Um, though it's bothering me, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take out the eyes because that's kind of the trickiest part there. Actually, it looks better without the eyes. And I would need a thinner, um, a, th a thinner, 
you know, a sharper, sharper brush to, to go ahead and do that. So I'll do a quick, quick draw over with the, with the technical pen. And this time I'll try not to make things too sketchy, but I also won't, you know, over, overdo it as far as yeah, trying to get it perfect either. So I'm just going to do something like this. And as I'm doing it, I'm looking over and seeing if there's anything I notice that I want to emulate or learn from as I'm making these marks, being a little more, more deliberate about the lines I'm putting down. So it's like a different kind of in, 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 provo or evoking you know, challenging my mind in different ways. So see, it's interesting. There's no, there's no line under here. That's just defined by the shadow, but there is a line here underneath the pectoral. And this line actually doesn't connect. It's a little bit higher. So actually I wanna drop this down. Okay. And then Something like that. I'm imagining that's kind of sticking up a little bit. And I liked Aquaman, I think had this kind of, you know, neck thing. So I'll throw that in there. I'm wondering if that's actually too small. No, I think that's fine. Anyways, it's not going to be perfect, but it's about learning. This is a practice. This is my sketch practice diaries. So when you're doing your sketch practicing, that is the time to play around and not fret or stress about how things are looking because it's just going to constrain, constrain you, you know, make the process less, less enjoyable. It's going to make you practice less. So I'm just kind of having fun with it at this point. Again, coming back to the biceps, making it smaller there and then I'll actually maybe I'll stop here I won't do the legs and instead go into the coloring digital painting portion because I think that's would be another valuable thing that I want to be able to help um, my client with because he's also working in procreate and so you know, I want to have that process down, though I already know how I would go about it. But this is a further, further helpful resource for him and for you guys to be working on it. So actually there's no line work there. That's going to be all part of the shading. And uh, maybe I'll make his belt like this and then I'll leave it at that. All right. Let's just leave it right there. Because I don't want this to go too, too in depth. Cool. So the way we would take it from here is start off with coloring in the flats. Actually, I just wanted to so he's got the trapezius. So this actually should be a little more over here. So normally I wouldn't, this one actually is a round one, rounded as opposed to. So normally I wouldn't, you know, do the, do the line work this quickly if I was planning to, to color it. I would be a little more deliberate and take my time. But yeah, I think for now, this is going to work out just fine. So we can get rid of our bottom, bottom sketch. 
and um, you can start to shade block in the major shapes. So one way to do that would just be, let's make a layer underneath and she's a cool color. So maybe he's like, you know, this yellow color. Let's just go with that. So you can just go ahead and start shading it in like this. Or the other option, which can be really clean and kind of satisfying is to take the lasso tool and carefully outline the area you want, you know, and you can do it in little sections and then just boom, fill it in. And then these little parts right here, so deselect it, kind of fix that. So I'm going to do the lasso tool version. I think that's going to be a little faster and more satisfying. Again, I'm doing this quite fast, not really taking too much time to, to worry about the details because I want to give an idea of this process without, you know, taking all the little detailed time it needs to get these things just right. Okay, so that'll give us this part. Why can't I, oh, is there a little mark there? Okay. And then we'll choose a skin tone. And often I might do this on different layers. So for example, I'll do these on two different layers. So if I make a new layer, and I'm gonna choose a skin tone Yeah, this guy has like a tan skin tone. That'd be kind of interesting. All right, let's see it. Let's see what that looks like. So choose a skin tone. And so now I can go to the layer, you know, with the, with the yellow and I can be like, hmm, would you look better as like in a blue? What would be a nice, nice color? You could change the saturation and all that. Even a more saturated, but I kind of like the, the color I started with here. I can do a preview. You know, I kind of like the color I started with, so I'm gonna leave it at that for now. And I'm going to, so here at this point, we don't need to do any like gradients and stuff. We need to just find the main shadow shapes and, and work on those. So I'm gonna to go to the head and I'm actually gonna combine these because I want them to be on one layer so I can create a clipping mask. So I went ahead and did that. And then we're gonna choose a hair color, color for the hair and the eyebrows. Oops, I thought I did that. Um, alpha lock, so that now I cannot paint outside of the, the colored lines, is what alpha lock does. So that's gonna be helpful in shading in the hair faster. I don't have to worry about going outside the lines. Okay, you know, some white for the eyes. And um, maybe the white for the diamond as well. So that could be a thing where it's like this white and this yellow. And then one other color potentially for, for his uh, gloves. So I might choose a, it would be a nice compliment. See, this is where you can go on a new layer color in the gloves with any color you want. And then go to the hue and saturation. And just kind of play with the hue until you find one. Like, maybe a kind of like orange color. Could be cool. Yeah, so let's do that. And that's fine. You know, and I probably wouldn't pitch this guy to Warner Brothers, but for a, ran a random one-off, you know, quick, just make him up on the fly type guy, he'll do just fine. All right. I just want to add a little more detail to the ears because I think that'll look, look nice. Should actually see how he does the ears, but that's all right. 
And then actually I'm noticing, see I made that outline of, but that's actually gonna be a shape we'll do using the, um, the shading. But what he has is something like this. It just kind of indicates the nostrils. Okay, so let's leave it at that and then we'll put in the shading right now. Um, so the next thing is to create a layer on top of the layer you did, and we're gonna go, not alpha lock, we're gonna go clipping mask. You see a little arrow shows that now you cannot paint outside the area underneath. Okay, so right now that means, and I'm going to choose a, I think he's using like a purplish with maybe a little bit of red. Purple is a pretty standard color for shadows. So I'm thinking maybe something like, like this. And then we're gonna change this layer to multiply. And the lower the opacity, we can play with this as we, afterwards, but for now, lower the opacity. And the edges of his shadows are so clean. So actually see the low, I would actually lower the opacity more, make this a little more, it doesn't matter because we can change that later. So let's just leave it at that. So the edges of his things are so clean, like I wouldn't be surprised if he uses, you know, a lasso tool to put those in as well. So doing something like this and then just shading it in like that to get these really clean edges. But I think that's a little bit trickier because let's say we're gonna have something like this, so this whole, oops. Okay, like that. This whole area will be in shadow, boom. But I think when you're starting off, it's easier to just go in with your brush and you can like, you know, add and subtract as necessary. So you can erase this out. But you can see that we're starting to really get, get that general vibe for, um, for Phil's style. Yeah, we're on a first name basis now. And so this is a great start, you know, for, for learning this. And then see, I can erase to get that sharper corner, sharper edge if I want to. So yeah, I'll finish up this and I should know like where my light source is coming from and all that, but this is a pretty like straightforward light source. I think that it'll be fine to just to just have the light coming from, you know, the top left general area. It's interesting on see on this on this piece, the left arm, like I would probably have put some shadow like here, for instance, but he's got the left arm completely unshadowed, except for when you get down to here. So I'm actually going to try that. And I also notice that the forearm line doesn't come too much further out. So I'm gonna raise that back. And let's see, there's like a slight shadow here. So he's definitely not like overdoing it with the shadows. Okay, the big one here are these, these abdomen, these ab muscles, which have their own have a shape to them like that. And it comes down here. Cool. There isn't too much on this side. All right, and then the, the um, like crotch area is pretty, pretty much always, I think, fully in shadow. I'd have to look at his other things, but I think that helps to kind of bring more attention to the upper body, which is where, you know, the, the focal point is, is more, it's more in that area. So there's these areas underneath between the neck and the, so this should actually kind of be like that. And again, not everything's adding up matching up, but this is cool. This is working out so far. So I'm just gonna kind of go with it and finish it off. There's gonna be some shadow under the neck for sure. 
let's say more on this uh, right side of the face. And here is where we have that shape. See how it worked out, that brought the nose, made the nose much nicer. You know, by just including that shape we've identified. Cool. Yeah, this has been really fun. I really enjoy this style and I can definitely see myself uh, having more, having more fun. I can tell now that I'm zooming in that he uses actually much thinner line work than I do. Let me clean up the hair a little bit um, than I did here. So that would be one, one adjustment I would make in, in future ones. I think the thinner line work even takes a little more precision, but I'm not sure. So, so uh, something to experiment with. Okay, and then the last step would be to add the highlights. Okay, so we've added the shadows and then we can go in, you know, I'm doing it pretty quickly, so it's, it's, uh, it's pretty rough, but, um, you know, we can go into the, to the opacity and lighten or darken it as we see fit to get it looking the way we'd like. We can also go into the hue, saturation, and brightness and like, Ooh, like see, I think increasing the saturation is actually nice. Maybe, yeah, moving it a little more towards the red. So I think if we look at before and after, this with the red really feels like it's, it's it has more of the feel that I would personally go for. Um, I don't think there's necessarily like a right or wrong answer, but now I would need to, need to go like this put it back to normal and sample this color to get the right right color and go back to the opacity and lower it. And I've got the right color again if I want to add stuff. Cool. So I'll leave it at that for now. And then we'll add the highlights is going to be the last step. So for the highlights, you could add a secondary layer and put it on something like you know, play around with it, but go like hard light or lighter color or overlay, find color of the light source. So maybe like a yellow, a, you know, pretty bright like yellow. And then coming in here and adding the shines. Shine. So I'm seeing that for this one, he's got like a shiny piece that kind of like almost comes down like that. So there's, a tiny bit like that, and then it comes in here and kind of follows the, the abs down. And obviously this is super rough, so I'd have to come in here, just clean it up so it's not overlapping and make them prettier shapes. All right, I worked on it a little more and this is the, the results. His name is Guy Diamond and uh, He's a superhero. Got a whole origin story and everything, but before I'll, I'll share a little bit about that. But some of the things I did differently that I noticed um, is in keeping with the style we're going for is I desaturated and darkened the shadows a bit and also darkened the costume a little bit. I noticed that he tends to have darker colored costumes um, with his characters. And then like adding little details like this orange line on the pants and uh, upper body adds a, a, a certain um, appeal and you can tell like there is this would have to be cleaned up a lot I noticed that the lines needed to be thinner even so in the legs I used this very thin line weight and I tried to thin it up on the upper body a little bit as well and then just clean things up a little bit so yeah his name is Guy Diamond and his superpower so he was a, um, a amateur bodybuilder and martial artist who worked as a pizza delivery boy and he goes, or delivery guy, and he goes and delivers pizzas to these scientists who are reverse engineering some alien technology. And uh, they have just kind of had a breakthrough or something. They're drunk though when they order the pizzas and something goes wrong and uh, he gets hit by, you know, this alien technology that makes his tissues extremely dense like that of a diamonds and so he's like impervious to to most damage 
maybe like diamond headed bullets could could pierce his flesh but like nothing short of that um and that's his only real superpower but it also gives him some super strength because you know his muscles are a lot uh are made of this advanced tissue and uh yeah his real name is guy jackson but goes by guy diamond as his uh superhero name so that's what my wife and i came up with right on so i hope that this was helpful and uh if there's a certain uh, style you'd like to see me do a breakdown like this of let me know in the comments otherwise i hope this video has left you with just a little bit more pencil, pencil power, power. I should draw the pencil power superhero.